It's the Lockdown NFL Podcast. Bo Brock hanging out here in Los Angeles, the site of Super Bowl 56. The Rams taking on the Bengals. Excited to be joined by quarterback Jake Plummer and Marcus Capone, SEAL Team 6. He used to play some college football back in the day. And Jake, your former teammate, your friend, it's going to be 20 years in May that Pat Tillman walked away from the game and enlisted. Tell me what it was like back then, how you found out, and the impact it's made ever since nearly two decades. Yeah, you know, I found out before he made the decision that he was considering it and was asked to, like, go talk to him, try to change his mind. I'm like, I'm not talking to Pat Tillman about changing his mind. If he's got his mind made up, that's, that's what he's doing. So I wished him well and hugged him, told him I love him, and hoped to see him again. And sadly enough, he didn't ever get to finish up his duty and come back. I mean, he was back a little bit, and we'd hung out a couple times. and. Just a little bit about Pat. Like he called me before he left for his last uh, trip to Afghanistan, and uh, he checked in to see how I was doing. Like, hey, how you doing, man? Everything good? Because I've been through a big event in my life, and it's like, that's the kind of guy he was. He's leaving to go possibly not come back, which sadly enough, he didn't. He's calling to check on his friends. And so Pat was a special guy. Um, his impact is still, you know, to inspire me to, 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 you know, less talk, more action. You know, get off your ass and do what you always want to do and go help the world be a better place. And, uh, you know, what's kind of crazy is I'm sitting next to Marcus Capone here, who's like, I mean, we're talking about Pat, who's dead and gone, who was a badass man. Yeah. This is a badass man right here next to me doing amazing things. Actually, you know, years in, in service for our country as a Navy SEAL and like now doing even more like, you know, amazing work with, with veterans. So yeah, your path leads you to meet people. I encourage people, if you want to live in the light of Pat Tillman, don't walk by an individual that may seem interesting to you. If you feel there could be a connection, go say hi and say, what's up? Because Pat was all about making connections, inspiring people and, and being a good friend. Marcus, how about yourself? Football background? I mean, you know the story about Pat. What, is, what does he mean to you? Yeah, I think Pat's story is, is super inspiring. I mean, I think anyone that walks away from a uh, multi-million dollar contract to pursue something, you know, pursue something um, like the military is just, uh, you know, in my book, just, just like Jake just said, it's, uh, you know, it really, uh, I, should, I think it should humble everyone and it tells a lot about an individual. Um, you know, he wanted to do something obviously higher for himself. Like it wasn't always about him. I think he played football and was probably, you know, gifted as a really talented athlete. He worked his ass off, I imagine. Um, but I feel like an individual like him and, and like myself and others who are called to serve, it's uh, it's much bigger than you. You want to be around like-minded individuals and do something bigger for yourself. And 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 and, and if you're a patriot, you want to fight for your country because yeah. you know the freedoms that we have here weren't. You know, they weren't free, right? You know, our forefathers, uh, you know, they suffered for us to sit here today at, at Radio Row. Yeah, I, I feel like we're in the toy department. We're getting to talk about this game, but you guys are here for a very worthy cause, great cause. Tell me more about it. Yeah, vets. So um, I co-founded a, a, a charity with my wife, Amber, uh, Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. We're at vetsolutions.org. Um, I, uh, like many NFL players and like many veterans, uh, when you take off the jersey or the uniform, um, for some reason it seems like your mental health goes to shit, you know, and, and it could be a partly a mild traumatic brain injury, it could be depression, it could be anxiety, whatever it is, that transition is very difficult for a lot of us, and that's where, you know, that's where uh, high-performing athletes, high-performing soldiers, that's why we're here together. Um, so I had my own struggles. I found healing. Um, not through Western medicine. Western medicine decided to give me uh, a lot of pharmaceuticals that I was on for seven years straight. Uh, and I visited a lot of brain clinics and I didn't have a lot of answers that said, you get something wrong with your head. Um, I had to find healing outside the U.S. Uh, after I fought for this country, outside the U.S. Um, I found healing through uh, psychedelic medicine, psychedelic assisted therapy, and uh, in countries where they're legal. And what we're trying to do is to destigmatize uh, psychedelics. Um, they were abused. At one point, now I think they're, they are, we're on a new track, a new renaissance, and um, you know, 20 years of sustained combat. Um, you know, our country's never seen that, and I think we owe it to our veterans to give them the healing they need. And if that's in a in a pill form, let it be it. If they have to go outside the U.S. to find healing, like I did, so let it be it. But why don't we why don't we take those um, those medicines and bring them back here in the U.S. and allow access. Uh, right here. And you can uh, find, visit vetsolutions.org, getumbo.com. Jake, you're wearing the shirt. Uh, it's just a company that you're, you're involved with. Yeah, it's centered around functional mushrooms. Uh, you know, right now, psilocybin is illegal. 
uh, federally. Uh, it's been decriminalized in Denver. My business partner, Del Jolly, helped that happen so that there could be some, some uh, physicians-assisted therapies using that, that uh, beautiful mushroom to help some people find uh, some, some relief from, from whatever they are, are going through. And, um, you know, as you hear Marcus talk, and I was, as I was listening, I was thinking if Pat was alive right now, he'd be one to sit right next to this dude and dive in and go, well, dude, who are you? What did you do? I could tell me more, you know? And so as, as we were looking at a guy who was on his, you know, not his last rope, but damn near there, not living the life, had fought for our country, was down and out and considering ending it, to see, that, see him now and see what he's doing and what he's doing for so many people, I mean, that's where the real work is. So Umbo, as we're going to get into the industry of mushrooms and selling bars and functional powders, all legal but all good to help you uh, with your health and wellness and optimize your, your performance as a human, we're going to help fund some research so that we can continue to serve our, our, you know, our country by sending the vets down to, to find relief, yeah. uh, giving them an opportunity to, like, to live yeah. and uh, enjoy life. Yeah, Jake. And, 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 you know, just, just to, to caveat, so, you know, what we're doing at VETS, um, after my uh, treatment four years ago, we have now funded over 450 uh, special operations and other combat veterans to go outside the U.S. and receive the same treatment. And we're working on research now, as Jake said, they're going to support some of that. And we're working on a lot of advocacy work, so federal and state, um, you know, lawmakers. Did you ever think it was going to look like this? I mean, as far as maybe helping you on the path was going to be... Uh, something that resembled umbo, you know, just a, something in a pill form or something in a, in a, in a, it's in a, in a bar as well. We have a bar, gummy yeah. and pills, uh, capsules, but you know, it's, it, we're just trying to provide the highest grade powders out there because yeah. it's a new industry and anybody can go put little mushrooms in their, in some powder and call it a mushroom powder when really there might not even be enough to really benefit you. We want to give people a chance to really feel the benefits of, of this wonderful kingdom of fungus. and. If we can help with uh, an organization like Vet Solutions that's doing some like amazing, amazing work, um, you know that's what we're all geared towards is uh, you know creating a better world. Whatever we can do, one person at a time or or whole groups at a time, and share that information and like Marcus said, advocate and educate people on on what's really out there. You know our mission is to end veteran suicide, and so you know still upwards of 20 veteran suicides a day. It's not cool. It's not uh, it's not okay in, in our book, and so. Um, we're going to keep driving forward to make sure you know that doesn't happen on, on my watch. Absolutely. Uh, let's let's get into a little football discussion. Yeah. Both of you guys' football background. The organization you were drafted by in the second round. Some interesting storylines coming out of there from their franchise quarterback now, Kyler Murray. Are, are you up to speed as far as what's going on? Can you? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, if they looked at Jake Plummer's screen time, would be envious. It's probably like 15 minutes compared to a lot of people who are in the hours. Do you understand what's going on with Kyler Murray? I, I, you know, I don't dive into the rabbit hole that often, yeah. but I get little bits of information fed me, fed to me, and uh, Mike Silver kind of fed, filled me in on what was happening. Mostly, it's just you know, it's the new generation that we're dealing with, uh, that, that kids that have been on these devices. That's how they communicate. So I don't fault him for, I guess, unfriending the Arizona <laughs> Cardinals on social media, but I just think. If he has an issue, the best thing to do is to go talk to Mike Bidwell. Mike, I mean, Mike's a guy I, that was around when I was there. Um, he had lunches with me where we'd go and we'd talk about what could we do better. He'd ask me, what can we do better as an organization? What should we do for the players? And I would tell him straight up how I felt. So there was an honest, good, trusting relationship there. And if you're the face of that franchise, then go make that sure that that relationship's there. Don't go through your dad or your mom or your agent or your other. Go face to face with the person that's signing your checks and say, hey, I don't like what's going on here. Or, hey, I would like this. And if you mean something to them and they understand your value, then they'll do it. But if you just do it passive aggressively through social media, I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a weak attempt at, at standing up like a man. Yeah. You know, as much you had that incredible playoff run with the Cardinals back in the in the late 90s, and then after that, you know the organization still struggled. It's come a long way since then. But you, like Matthew Stafford, you went on to Denver after your Cardinals career. You made the playoffs three out of the next four seasons. What's that like to go from an organization that was struggling like Arizona to a team like Denver and they kind of yeah. It's hard because they struggled for, for multiple reasons. You know, mainly was they let go of a lot of veteran players from that 98 team. Larry Sinners, Jameer Miller, Lomas Brown, these are all-star, all-pro players and put a lot of weight on to me and younger players. And so, you know, it's great to see Stafford get a chance after being in Detroit where, you know, for some reason they just didn't know how to win. And I think that comes down from a belief and a mindset and an organizational, like, credo that, hey, this is what we do. Our 
success is about our players, because if not for players, there'd be no game. And so if we make sure the players are taken care of and they're happy and they got everything they want and they go out and they feel comfortable here and they can perform, then good things happen. So going from Arizona to Denver, for me, I mean, that organization in Denver was, Mr. Boland didn't care about anything other than how you treated people, how you treated people that couldn't do something for you. Were you a good human? Were you gonna be part of this family? If you are, then we'll do whatever it takes to make your life simple so you can focus on football and go win. And so that was fun and refreshing. And then to actually really have a shot at being in the Super Bowl every year and almost getting there in 05. Uh, that's why you know I'm, I'm kind of rooting for Stafford. After those years in Detroit, I know what he went through. Third away, about two thirds of the way through the season, it's over for you and you still got to go get your ass kicked for six more weeks knowing that there's no reward or chance to go do what you dreamt of since you were a kid. That's hardcore. I've been, I've been through it, so I'm glad to see him getting a chance. Yeah. I'm no good. I'm with, I'm, with, I'm with Jake. You know, I think Stafford deserves a chance at the, at the title, and Burrow's got a long time ahead of him. So, you know, and uh, yeah, he's good. Here too. It's a pretty incredible run for him, though. Marcus Capone, Jake Plummer. Check it out. Vetsolutions.org, and of course, get Umbo.com. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Sir. I appreciate it.